So is the fact that short channel transistors velocity saturate instead of pinch off saturate a good thing or a bad thing? So when we talked about the two um, saturation currents that we can have, we found that one of them was I equals to K over two into VGS minus V threshold square. The other was I equals um, 0.5 WC oxide V set N, in the case of a, an N mass of course, into VGS minus V threshold minus 0.5 VDS set. Um, so these are both saturation currents, so we're not talking about ohmic currents. It's just important to understand how the two are different and when one happens and when the other uh, happens and which of them we are happier to see. So basically, the only difference between the two, the um, thing that caused the, causes us to see one and not see the other, is basically how the quantity uh, E set L compares to the quantity VGS minus V threshold. So basically, if E set L is uh, much smaller than VGS minus V threshold, we are likely to see this result. If E set L is much larger than VGS minus V threshold, we will see this result. And so it's the comparison between these two that gives us this conclusion. And if you look at this comparison, uh, E set L is uh, basically controlled by L. It's not controlled by ESAT because ESAT, the saturation field, is reasonably constant. It's related to, uh, velo the, to the saturation velocity as well as mobility. So it's um, somehow a function of temperature and doping, but it's reasonably constant. But the only thing that is really um, variable here is L. So if we have a very short channel transistor, the whole quantity ESAT L is gonna be small causing us to see this saturation current. If the quantity E set L is large, then uh, we are likely to see this saturation current. So we call this saturation uh, mechanism and its associated current pinch off saturation. And we call the other one velocity saturation. So what's happening here? What's happening is that current, ohmic current, saturation current, any kind of current that flows anywhere is the product of two things. Uh, the charge density at a certain point multiplied by the velocity at which this charge density moves. So it is the product of these two components. Once one of these two components, one, once one of these two things saturates, the current will saturate. So if the charge in the channel saturates, we see pinch off saturation. If the velocity at which such charge moves saturates, we see velocity saturation. So let's consider pinch off saturation, which is uh, what we are used to in long channel transistors. So what happens here is that the channel has a variable uh, charge profile from the source to the drain. This is mainly caused by uh, rising drain potential, causing uh, the channel to be narrower at the drain. The more drain potential we uh, impose, uh, the narrower the channel is at the drain, the uh, shallower it is at the drain, and the less charge density there is at the drain, until at some point there's no charge at the drain. This is the process of uh, pinching off the channel at the drain. So if the channel disappears at the drain, we say that there is, has been pinch off saturation. And the reason the current saturates is that in this case, Q saturates. Once Q saturates, the current saturates and also the velocity profile becomes fixed at the last velocity profile we saw to keep the current saturated. On the other hand, in very short channel transistors, we can see a situation where the channel has not yet disappeared at the drain. However, when we apply larger and larger VDS, we apply larger and larger field across the channel. This larger and larger field causes electrons in the channel to move uh, faster and faster. And so we start seeing electrons moving faster. But at some point, electrons cannot move any faster. 
So let's imagine a situation where we are causing electrons to move so fast that they cannot move faster, meaning they have already hit their, their saturation velocity value. Yet the channel has not disappeared at the drain. In that case, the current will saturate because the velocity has saturated, even though charge is still, still has some room to move at the drain. In such a case, the charge profile is going uh, to uh, saturate as well. It's going to uh, remain constant to keep the current uh, constant. So which of these two mechanisms happen? And can one follow the other? And can one you know, uh, combine with the other? The answer is one of them will happen first. So whichever happens first is the saturation mechanism that governs the, the transistor. So let's assume that pinch-off saturation has happened first, meaning that the channel has disappeared at the drain. In this case, the value of saturation current is the value of saturation current as determined by pinch-off saturation. But could it also not happen? Could it also not be true that after pinch-off happens, the charges will velocity saturate? The answer is no, because once you have pinched off at the channel, any excess VDS, any VDS above uh, VGS minus V threshold, which we call VDS excess, so this, is, this would be VDS minus VGS minus V threshold. So it's the balance between VDS, the currently applied VDS, and um, the VDS that caused pinch off. This excess VDS, will fall entirely on the depletion region formed between the end of the channel and the beginning of the drain. This will take care of uh, sweeping the charges across, across this depletion region, and its impact on current will appear in the form of channel length modulation. And so the velocity, the voltage applied across the channel proper is going to saturate at VGS minus V threshold. And so the velocity of the charges is not going to increase any above the value that we saw at pinch off saturation. Of course, this is not strictly true because the value of velocity will increase a little bit due uh, to the effective channel being shortened due to channel length modulation. But this effect is not going to cause charges to velocity saturate. So if pinch off saturation happens first, you can forget about velocity saturation happening after it. If velocity saturation occurs first and then we raise the value of VDS above this value, then what, what's going to happen is that the point in the channel at which the velocity saturates will occur earlier. From that point at which the velocity saturates, the velocity and the channel uh, charge density have to be constant till we meet the drain because the current has to be the same at all points in the channel. So any excess VDS applied on a velocity saturated transistor is only going to lead also to channel length modulation. What this means is that a certain transistor is only likely to see pinch off saturation or velocity saturation. So the complicated model of saturation current, which combines both velocity saturation and pinch off saturation is not really necessary. The asymptotic model where one or the other saturation mechanism uh, dominates is a lot more useful. Now, most modern transistors are not going to see pinch off saturation. They are all going to be uh, at least velocity saturated uh, because the main factor that affects whether it's at a certain MOSFET sees velocity saturation or pinch off saturation is channel length. So. Given channel length, you can actually predict which, uh, which saturation mechanism we see. And most modern transistors are not going to be pinched off. So the question is, is this a good thing or is this a bad thing? When we look at the current expressions, we see that the current expression for velocity saturation is linear, whereas the current expression for uh, pinch off saturation is quadratic. This means that velocity saturation is not good news. Uh, simply because it means that we have um, current increasing linearly instead of increasing quadratically. So quadratic current is going to catch up with and exceed linear current uh, very quickly, which generally means that for pinch off saturated transistors, we have more saturation current available than a corresponding uh, velocity saturated transistor. 
Less current means uh, more resistance, means more delay. And so in general, velocity saturation is bad news.